All right, everybody. Today is going to be our last day uh, preparing for our quiz on modeling and solving multiple step problems. So again, those problems where we've got more than one step, trying to identify whether we're going to add, multiply, subtract, or divide those, uh, and trying to figure out the best way that we can show our work in solving that. So a couple things to uh, before we get started. Make sure that when you're doing this that you are taking your time. Okay, go slow, think it out. Make sure you try to, to figure out the best way you can show your answers because we do want to model our answers as well. So you'll be able to show how we got that. Or I try to explain our answer to somebody else that doesn't get it. How can we show our, our answers, um, thinking it through. So make sure that you're taking your time and doing that um, and making sure that it makes sense. Make sure that you're answering the question that they're asking. So really pay attention um, to answering the problem. Right, sometimes they're asking for certain things. Make sure you're understanding what they're asking of you. And last but not least, as we're doing these, I know some of these are tough, all right? And it's okay to get it wrong, but it's not okay not to try. So just do your best. I know some of them are tricky, but really put your time into it. It's not who's gonna get this the fastest, it's who's gonna take their time and, and understand it. So really take your time on these guys. Here's the first one we'll talk about today. Joe buys five packs of hot dogs. Got a barbecue, got a bunch of people coming over. Gonna get some hot dogs going. Uh, maybe they got, uh, got them on the grill, gonna hang out. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. Each pack has eight hot dogs in it. Hot dog buns come in packs of six. This is a real world situation, it's a real problem. Why hot dogs comes in a different amount than hot dog buns, I don't know, but it's a real world problem, folks. Uh, so let's try to write and solve an equation to find how many packs of buns Joe needs to buy. Okay, so we've got Joe buys five packs of hot dogs. Each pack has eight hot dog buns. Hot dog buns come in packs of six. How many packs? packs of buns does he need so what are we talking about in this story while well, we're talking about hopefully you're thinking about what we're talking about we're talking about hot dog buns we're talking about hot dog buns because that's what we're trying to find out is um how many hot dogs buns does he need right so how many packs does uh joe need to buy is what we're trying to find out. Our important information in this one, we've got um, five packs of hot dogs. We've got eight in each pack, and there's packs of six for the bonds. No tricky numbers. So, we've got a multiple step problem, we know this. What's the first thing we need to figure out? What do we need, what information is important? What I think you would want to figure out first is how many hot dogs does Joe have? Right? Every hot dog needs a bun, right? Otherwise people are walking around burning their fingers, trying to eat a hot dog and ketchup all over their fingers. It's a hot mess. Can't do it. Got to have a hot dog bun with your hot dog. All right. So how is Joe going to do this to make sure everybody that comes and wants a hot dog gets a hot dog bun? First thing first, you got to figure out how many hot dogs he's got. Well, he's got five packs of hot dogs and there's eight in each pack. So when we're dealing with groups of something of like of this right where we've got 
five groups of eight. Hopefully that's kind of setting off alarms for you, knowing that we're going to be doing a multiplication problem. And we're going to do that before we do anything else. So we're going to figure out this multiplication problem. Once we have that, we want to look at breaking them into groups of six, right? Because we want to put them into um, looking at the pack. So we're going to put them into groups. So no longer are we going to multiply. We're actually going to divide them into groups of six. And so this is going to be our equation. Just kind of think it through in the story. What is going to happen? We're going to start by getting some hot dogs and then breaking those hot dogs into groups of six to match the buns that are coming in groups of six. So just try to break it down in order of what's happening with the important information. And here's your equation, right? And so that's going to equal B for buns. Okay. We can model this as well, right? So he's going to have a pack of hot dogs. He's actually got uh, five of these, right? Two, three, four, five, and there's eight in each one. All right, so hopefully we know that five times eight is 40. We're gonna divide that by six. So now we gotta break these into groups of six, right? So if I know from here to here, this is 40, right? We can break this down further into groups of six. Well, here would be a six, 12, 14, oops, not 14, sorry, 18. Next one's going to be 24. Next one's going to be 20, nope, 30. It's five. 36, 42. So here, this line right here is 40. All right, right here, this is 40 things. If I look at my blue line here, we're going up by six. He's going to need one pack two packs, three packs, four packs, five packs. He's gonna go through six full packs. However, um, if he does that, these last few people are going to have a hot dog without a bun and they're gonna get ketchup on their fingers and mustard on their fingers and they'll have to squirt the relish straight into their mouth and it's gonna be a mess and we can't do that. And that's like anarchy. We need to have system and law and order. These people need a hot dog buns. So how many packs does Joe need to buy if he doesn't want people getting relish all over their shirts? It's going to be seven. They need seven of them, right? And we can check this. I know if I had 36 divided by six, I would get six because six times six is 36. I would know that if I went 42 divided by 6, I would get 7. So our 40 answer would kind of fit between those. All right, so he's going to need more than that. This is where we get that remainder, right? So he needs um, 6 packs would be a remainder of 4. We talked about that word remainder, but if we're... Uh, we don't want those leftover ones, though. He needs to get a seventh pack. Unless he's going to go to the store and, like, ask for a part of a pack. That doesn't work, though. So seven is the answer. Uh, in this one, they're talking about banana bread. And it just kind of shows us another way. This is kind of the way I drew it out. Myron and Suzanne make banana bread. Each batch uses three bananas. So each time they make banana bread, they need three bananas. Myron has five bananas and Suzanne has eight bananas. Write an equation to show how many batches of banana bread they can make. Do they have any bananas left over? 
And so what they're showing here on this is here's Myron, right? Myron has five bananas. Here's Myron. Suzanne has eight bananas. Here's Suzanne's eight, right? And each batch uses three. So that's what this is. One, two, three, four. Because each of these jumps is three bananas, right? So three, six, nine, 12. Okay, so there's your jumps for the three bananas. So I'm gonna break this down. First, you're gonna add those bananas um, that they have, and then they need three for each one, so you divide it by three, just like these jumps, okay? And that's great. Uh, another way you could think about this is if we know that they have 13 bananas, right? That's what we're trying to get to is 13, and they're going up by three, four times three equals 12, five times three equals 15. We're gonna go somewhere in between those. So it's going to be more than four, less than five. And that can help us too, as long as we know our math facts. Um, but how many can they make? In this case, they can make one batch, two batches, three batches, they can make four, right? Four batches, and they're gonna have one banana left over, right? So that remainder of one banana. Open your math journals to page 209. Let's take a look at page 209. If you're looking at it upside down, that's a 605. Let's take a look at 209. Right here, page 209. A pet store has 18 rabbits. So a lot of bunnies running around, 18 of them. That is three times the number of cats the store has. A lot fewer cats. Write and solve an equation to find how many rabbits and cats the store has all together. Check the reasonableness of your answer. Show your work. So let's think about this first off. What are we talking about in this story? What are we talking about? What is this question about? Uh, somebody say it. Somebody shout it out. We're actually talking about pets. In this one right so we're talking about pets we got rabbits and cats we're talking about pets um, and what are we trying to find out we want to know um, how many rabbits and cats the store has all together so we know we're gonna be adding at some point in time um, and then what's our important information there's 18 rabbits that is three times the number of cats, all right? Um, and then we're gonna try to figure it out all together. So that's going to be the important thing, okay? So let's start with this. We gotta figure out how many pets they have. So let's figure out how many rabbits they have and how many cats. Well, how many rabbits do they have? Easy. 18. Okay. It says that 18 is three times the number of cats the store has. Is there more cats or are there more rabbits? Am I doing 18 times three or am I doing 18 divided by three? Are there more cats than rabbits or more rabbits than cats? In this case, there's more rabbits. So I need to make our number get smaller. So we'll use division, right? Or I could think of this as a multiplication problem. Three 
times something is going to give me 18, right? What is that something? Hopefully, you know that it's going to be 6. There are 6 cats. Great. Okay? So then the question is asking how many rabbits and cats the story has all together. All together, right? If somebody has two pencils and another person has one, how many pencils they have to get all together? They'd have three. So in this case, we're just adding 18 plus 6. I think your answer, 18 plus 6. Think your answer, 18 plus 6. 1, 2, 3. Say it. A uh, couple of you said 24. Good job. That's what we got. Okay, so as far as an equation goes, I know it's tricky, but if we just think this through, right, what did we do? We went 18 divided by 3. Plus 18 equals P for pets. And then we get it. Our answer is 24. All right. Let's take a look at a couple more. This one's on page 210. And then I'll uh, turn, the, turn it over to Miss Erickson. Um, but let's do a couple more and just practice these. Taylor earns $5 each time she walks to the, the her neighbor's dog. Very nice. Good paying job. Five bucks just for walking the dog. She has already earned $25. Write and solve an equation to find out how many more times Taylor needs to walk the dog to earn enough money to buy a bike that costs $83. Check the reasonableness of your answer. That just means kind of estimate afterwards. Make sure it makes sense. Does your answer make sense? That's all they're looking for. So we could model this. This might be a good way to do it, right? Um, we're going to try to figure out um, first, whenever we have these, what is this question about? We're talking about money. Makes it easy when it's got the little dollar signs. We're talking about money. Um, what are they looking at us to do? How many more times Taylor needs to walk the dog to earn a bike? Uh, and last but not least, what is important information? It's easy because it's all the numbers again. They're not tricking us. Okay. So if we modeled this, she starts with $25. Right? She starts off with $25. Right? We need to get to... $83. Okay. How many groups of five do we need to put in here? Right. We want to go up by five. How many groups of five do we need to put in there? That would be one way to model it. Okay. Um, so for starters, we should probably figure out this gap, right? Right here. How much are we off by? If this is 25, this is 83, how far away are we from these numbers? Um, and it's pretty easy to figure out. We can just simply take and subtract it. What is 83 minus 25? If we take our time and do this, should be able to get 58. So I know this is a gap of 58, right? So $58 from here to here. Great. Cool. That's good. All right. So now we just need to figure out how many times she needs to walk her dog and earn $5 before she gets her 58 that she needs. Okay. And we could, again, model this a different way. I would just think about it as if she needs five dollars, or sorry, if she did it ten, if we she walked the dog one time, she'd get five dollars. If she walked the dog twice, she'd get ten dollars. 
three times would be 15. Well, if she walked the dog five times 10, she'd get 50. That's not enough. Five times 11, that'd be 55. Still not enough. Five times 12 would be 60. She needs 58. If she did it 11 times, she'd almost have enough. So she needs to do it 12 times. And that is going to be your answer. She needs to walk the dog 12 times. Okay, I just did it right here. You might not know what 5 times 12 is. That's okay. If you know what 5 times 10 is, you can just go up a set, go up a set, and here's your answer. She needs to walk it, walk a dog 12 times because 11 isn't enough. All right, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, Miss Erickson will take you through the rest. Again, I know a lot of these are tricky. Please take your time on these. Think about the remainder. In this one, um, what would happen if Taylor didn't think of the remainder? Well, 11 isn't enough time. Right? He's going to have three bucks left over or two dollars left over. That's great. He's going to have two bucks. He can go buy some candy. But you have to think about those remainders. Take your time. Figure out the remainders. Go slow and do the best you can. We'll help you guys out, but it, you have to try. You'll learn from your mistakes. So it's okay to get it wrong, but it's not okay not to try. So take your time and uh, good luck with it, guys. I'll talk to you later.